My name is Simon and this is a follow-up to how to build a racing car. Four years ago I designed and built my own racing car which I used in the Australian Formula V competition. Now I'm going to try and replicate that racing car over the course of a new series. I'll have the advantage of having all of the original design files at my disposal, however the difference is that I'm no longer living in Australia and so don't have the car at my disposal anymore. If I need to go and measure something I'm not going to be able to just go and walk into the garage and check it. This project obviously is going to be quite different from the previous one, uh, given it's going to be mostly done on the computer, but I hope that if you enjoyed the previous one, you will enjoy this one. Before we kick off though, I'll just quickly mention that this video has been sponsored by Ridge Wallet. Uh, there'll be more about them at the end of this video. Something that occurred to me early in this project is just how different the goals and the um, constraints are that you're working around when you're designing and building a racing car for real life compared to designing and building a racing car in a sim racing uh, game. When you're designing a car for a real world series you're working around constraints like the amount of money, money that you have uh, and the rules for the series that you're trying to partake in. Uh, when you're designing a car though for sim racing it's, it's quite different. You're, you don't have those same constraints. You could set the, the amount of grip that a tyre has to uh, an absurdly high number you could give the engine a thousand horsepower uh, and you'd be going around the Nürburgring in a few minutes uh, flat. Uh, but that's not really the goal of designing and building a car in a sim racing uh, game. You, the purpose is to replicate as best as possible a real life racing car. Your constraints are different too. It, money is not really a constraint for you when you're doing a car in a sim racing uh, game. Uh, you may be a little bit constrained on the types of hardware and software that you can get your hands on, but for the most part uh, it's pretty simple to find free versions of software that you need uh, to do all of the different things that you need to do. It's also possible to find relatively cheap sim racing hardware, uh, like a, a wheel and pedals. So the constraint is more the sim racing uh, software itself, whether it can really replicate the car that you need to replicate as best as possible. This constraint is really going to be the one for me uh, that I'm going to be working against for the most part when I'm trying to replicate my racing car. The Formula V, as I mentioned in the previous series, uses parts from an old Type 1 Volkswagen Beetle, uh, which are very atypical for any other racing car. So it's going to be, it's not going to be guaranteed that every piece of sim racing software will be able to accurately replicate all of those, uh, all of those different parameters of the suspension that I'm going to need to replicate. To dive into that point a little bit more deeply, the front of the Formula V has to use the torsion leaf pack that uh, comes straight out of the road car, and this doesn't have a lot of torsional rigidity, and so what people typically end up doing in Formula V is they'll pre-tension the spring pack very hard against the bump stops, which means that the suspension will only be actuated after going through a corner very hard or going over a bump uh, quite hard. If they don't pre-tension it, then the front of the car is extremely soft. The rear swing arm I think actually won't be too hard to replicate, geometrically speaking at least. The upper and lower wishbone points can just be set to be the same, which will effectively mean that the, the rear suspension will swing around a single axis. What will be harder to replicate is the spring stiffness at the rear of the car. The Formula Vs typically use what's called a zero roll setup where they don't have an individual spring on the uh, right and left of the, uh, of the car. They rely on a single middle spring or like my car used a rocker with two springs which simulated the same thing uh, to allow the rear of the car to roll with very little stiffness but um, there would be stiffness against, uh, against bump. I think this combination of factors is going to make this area of the car very difficult to rep reproduce because even if a, a sim uses um, or is able to give me the ability to preload uh, one of the corner springs against the bump stop, I just think that this um, third spring preload is something which is going to be unusual enough that there's no guarantee that the sim, sim software will replicate this particular aspect. So the next step was choosing which piece of sim racing software to use. This on the screen here is a non-exhaustive list of the criteria which I chose to assess the software by. The first criteria I'm going to call immersion, and this is not just the visuals, though it is uh, the visuals are a part of it, 
Uh, it's not just the sound, it's kind of how all of these things come together to make you feel when you're driving the sim. How realistic and how real it feels to you when you're uh, when you are driving the car. The second criteria I used was what I'll call feel. Uh, this is at a high level it's the physics. How, how well the software simulates the tires, how well it simulates the sp suspension and the forces that come back to the driver's hands. The third criteria I'm going to call capability. This is the ability of the sim racing software to replicate all of those different aspects of the car that I just went over. Um, the reason that this is important is because the feel of the sim and the level of immersion you get in the sim doesn't really matter if the sim isn't able to adequately simulate all of the different aspects that make the Formula V so unique. If it can't do those things then there's kind of no point in trying to simulate the car in that piece of software. The next and final point I'm going to call modability. This is the ability for someone to add uh, modded cars into the sim. To take uh, an example, iRacing is a fantastic sim, but you're not able to add your own modded car into that sim, it's a closed ecosystem. There are some others like Automobilista, like Assetto Corsa Competizioni and Project Cars that uh, apparently it's possible to mod, mod in such a way that you can get a car into the sim, but it's not, it's not very well supported, which uh, for me is an important criteria because I'm coming into this relatively fresh, so I, uh, I need it to be as easy as possible and as well documented as possible. So when I take into account all of these criteria, I think that realistically there are only two options available to me, Assetto Corsa and R Factor 2. And I think that based on all of the other criteria, Assetto Corsa is probably just that little bit better uh, in terms of the compatibility with this project. I think the only thing that we need to do now is check the capability of that sim to make sure that it can sim all of those aspects that we discussed earlier. One thing to note uh, is actually that I need to also consider my own capability. I do have some experience doing 3D models for games and things like that in the past, but it's not very extensive. Um, and it's definitely nowhere near as, uh, I don't have as much experience as I do doing 3D CAD. Um, I do find 3D CAD modelling much more intuitive, which is probably related to my engineering background. Um, I'm aware that you can export 3D CAD models into 3D models which could be used in a, a racing sim. However, doing it that way is not particularly efficient because the, the model won't be well optimised. There will be lots of things that you won't be able to see but will slow down the overall processing time uh, for the computer that's trying to render the model. Uh, so I think that realistically it's going to be best for me to start from scratch and build my own model. One other area which I need to consider is uh, producing textures for the, for the model. Uh, this is an area which I have a lot less experience in, uh, doing sort of image, image, image processing and um, image editing. Uh, so it's something which I'm going to have to improve my skills in a lot as well. And another aspect which I need to consider is being able to produce the sounds uh, that will be required for the car. Uh, this is something where I do have some recordings from my old car obviously, but they're not really of a quality that you need for uh, putting into a sim. Uh, what I think I'm going to try and do here is find samples uh, and clips from different cars and try and as assemble a sound pack that sounds, sounds sort of appropriately like my car did. The other aspects, sort of modifying the data files needed to replicate all of the other um, physical aspects of my car, I'm actually not too worried about because this is something where I can just take all of the data that I already have, uh, build an Excel spreadsheet that will convert that into the appropriate um, inputs for the sim racing model and then copy them across. Before wrapping up, I'd just like to thank Ridge Wallet for sponsoring this video. Ridge Wallet creates ultra small and uh, light wallets. I personally like the small size, how light they are, and I actually really like the color of this matte cobalt one. And uh, for those of you living in the US, they're running a promotion where for every dollar that you spend on their website, uh, you'll be entered into a competition to win a Jeep Gladiator. For those of you that are interested, you can uh, use the, the promo code FBST05 on their website, uh, or you can click the link in the description below. Anyway, that's an outline of the project so far, uh, so we'll leave it there for today. The next time we come back, we'll start to put the car into Assetto Corsa uh, and just make sure that we can replicate all of the aspects that we need to uh, in order to fully simulate, um, fully simulate my car. Um, so stay tuned for that, and if you haven't watched uh, the previous series where I designed and built my racing car back in Australia, uh, feel free to go and do that on this channel. 
Um, anyway, that's it for now. Uh, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time.